Okay, so this, this session looks through what you're going to do in your biomedical science practicals for cellular pathology. So make sure that you print out and you have access to the instructions that are on Wolf that detail the two practical sessions that we're going to do. What I'm going to do now is go through the practical sessions, going through the booklet, <clears throat> and actually go through what you're going to be doing to explain how to do the, prepare your slides, how to stain the slides, and what we're looking at when you go through and look down the microscope at them. So if you look at the first page of the booklet, you've got details of what you need to do before you start the practical. Now, in your first year, you learned how to set up the microscope, so make sure you can remember how to do that, because it's really important that your microscope is set up correctly so that you can look at your slides down the microscope and you can see the cells and tissues, because part of this practical is to be able to identify different things. So to be able to get the right results, you need to be able to see things correctly down, <coughs> correctly down the microscope. So the first week we're going to be doing a cytology sample and in the second week is a histology sample, a tissue sample. So I've given you some um, links to look at so if you access those links beforehand so you can look at the types of cells and tissues that you're going to be looking at when you come to do the practical session. So the first thing to make sure before you come to the practical session is that you've got your personal protective equipment and that you're wearing it, otherwise you won't be allowed into the laboratory. So you need to bring your lab coat with you, your protective goggles, and also make sure you wear gloves during the whole of the session. You're going to be using human samples, so although these have been fixed in alcohol, you should always expect that they are, there is some danger from pathological samples. So make sure that you correctly dressed, that you don't bring things into the laboratory that, are, that you use outside at home, so no phones or anything like that, and make sure that you always wash your hands when you leave the lab. Make sure that you've done the health and safety checks and that you've gone through the health and safety regulations for these labs. All of the COSH forms have been put onto Wolf, so make sure you read them. That gives you details of all the chemicals that we're going to be using in the practicals what the dangers are with those chemicals, what to do if you spill them. And it's your responsibility to read through those and make sure that you're happy with them. These are the same as you do have in any working lab, so you need to get used to them because once you're out in the world of work, you're going to be having to use these all the time. The other thing that you need to check through on Wolf is your risk assessment form. And that's been done for you and it goes through what the hazards are within the laboratory and how we've sort of made sure that they're kept to a minimum. So again, make sure you read through these and make sure that you're happy with them. So the practical booklet goes through the basics of what we're going to do and what the aim and the learning outcomes are for this practical. So if we start with practical one, which is the cytology sample, the learning outcomes really are for you to be able to prepare a cytology sample, to stain it, to understand the different stages of the stain, and then to identify the cells. As I said, you've all got a sample which is from um, one of the local hospitals. It's a real sample that's already been reported out. It's a cervical cytology sample. So you, what your task is, is to prep the sample, to stain it, and to identify whether the patient had got an abnormality in that sample. So the first thing to do is you will be given the sample and you need to transfer it into one of these tubes. OK, so once you've spun your sample, which you'll spin for about five minutes on 15,000 RPM, you'll get a little pellet of cells in the bottom and the fluid above it. We need to remove the fluid so that you can access that pellet and produce a cytology sample on the slide. So you have to carefully take off the lid without sort of disturbing the pellet. Now you do this in one swift movement. You don't want to start tipping and then take it back because you'll disturb the pellet. So you just turn it upside down and tip the fluid out. You'll end up with a pellet at the bottom, so you don't need to turn it back up. You then need to get um, your pipette and two glass slides. You then take a sample of the pellet from the bottom and place a spot of it onto the slide. You get your other slide, place it right next to the drop, and touch the drop. So the cells then will spread all along. You then, at about 45 degree angle, spread the cells along. So you get a nice even layer of the cells along the slide. You then put your slide to one, 
side ready for it to dry. So you want the cells to um, dry and, and attach to the slide. The next stage is to put your name and your student number on the slide. We need this because these slides are going to be handed in at the end for assessment. So write your name and your student number clearly on the slide. Make sure that the sample is not thrown away because these will have to go back to be discarded correctly because, as I said, they're pathological samples. Okay, so the next stage, once your slide has dried, it's ready to be stained. And the whole idea of doing this staining process is as you stain the slide, you're going to be looking at what role each of the steps has. Now, normally in the lab, this would be automated. So you'd just put the slide on, it would go through the staining process, you'd take the slide off at the end. However, it's important to know what each stage does because if anything goes wrong with the staining, it's the biomedical scientist's role to be able to rectify it. If they don't know what the stain does, then they can't make sure that it's put, correct, put right. Okay? So each of these stages is for you to understand what the stain is doing and you're going to be making, recording what you see down the microscope. So on your booklet, you've got the method and it takes you through carefully what you need to do. So your first thing is to put it into al um, alcohol or ethanol solution. Now the cells have been fixed in an alcohol solution and we're going to be staining them in the first stain which is water based. So we have to rehydrate the cells. So to do that we take it through graduated alcohols. So starting off with 95% alcohol and then into 70% then we rinse with water and put it into the haematoxylin for five minutes. So all you do is find your 95% alcohol, open it up and put your slide in. And then time it carefully for two minutes. And you'll repeat this process going through each of the stages in the protocol. When you get to the haematoxylin stage, You'll then be leaving the slide in there for five minutes. So you put it into the haematoxylin for five minutes. Then you wash it in tap water and it's at this stage you then need to look at the slide under the microscope. So you want to be able to see what is the haematoxylin doing to the cytology sample. And at this point you make a note of what you see. So you should have your microscope set up ready. You take your slide out, wash it in tap water, and I'm not doing the full um, staining at the moment, so you'll be able to see it later. You put it under the microscope, I mean, dry the slide off slightly at the bottom, and look down to see what has happened to the cells. Make a record of that and then carry on. Now, don't let, make, take too long with this stage because you don't want the slide to dry out you want to be able to make sure that it's still covered in fluid and the next stage it goes into, it hasn't dried out in between. So then carry on, taking your slide through the staining process at each stage. Every time you've done the next step and it's, it, it tells you to make a note, record what you see down the microscope. Not what it tells you in a book, but what you're actually seeing. What do the cells look like? What colour are they? What different, what's happened in between each stage of the staining. So you take it through until you get to the end where you then re dehydrate the slide, take out all of the water and mount it with a cover slip. So going through each of the staining processes in turn, where it says wash in tap water, wash in tap water. If it says distilled water, you'll be given a bottle of distilled water to, to stain it with, to wash it with. Okay, so once you've completed that, you'll put a cover slip on the slide, which you'll do in the fume cabinet, because again, if you've read the COSH regulations for the, the mountain that we use, it's not something that you want to inhale. So you need to make sure that you do the um, clearing in the xylene substitute and the mountain with the cover slip in the fume hood. Once that's done and it's dried sufficiently so that it's not giving off fumes, you then look again down the microscope and you comment on your slide. Hopefully at this stage it's staying properly and you'll be able to diagnose whether there's normal cells or abnormal cells in this sample. 
So you review the slides and you make a note of what type of cells are present, whether they're normal or abnormal, and how you would report this sample. Okay, the final stage in the sample preparation is to put a cover slip onto the slide so that it preserves the material, protects it, and you can look at it underneath the microscope. So the mounting medium that we use is DPX mounting medium and it has the same refractive index as glass so you can easily see the sample down the microscope. So you want to make sure that you don't get any air bubbles in the sample. So you take a little bit of the, flu the DPX mounting medium into your pipette, place it onto the slide, you don't need to touch the slide. Once you put that on, take your cover slip Place it at an angle onto the slide and then drop it on and just gently tap down so all the air bubbles move out to the side and the mounting medium spreads along. So then you can leave the slide for a few minutes in the, in the um, fume hood so that all the uh, fumes evaporate off and then you can look at it down the microscope.